What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five with my man, Eric Sheet Tabor. We are going to be just talking through this three-game slate. I am going to post my notes today on days like this with games less than three slates uh, in Discord and uh, what I'm doing on this and the NBA slates night, as I don't think I would be able to make live this evening. But I, uh, it's a very small slate. We're going to have to get weird with it. Um, no need to worry about stacking. You can certainly play hitters against your own pitchers. And uh, with that said, Sheets, yeah, what do you think of this, this little one? Yeah, I'll probably be live, um, talk a little bit about this, talk a little bit the NBA, talk a little bit about the hockey, just, you know, just uh, uh, before I have to run out. But uh, I'll probably be on there. I see the little rain cloud over the Seattle-Boston game in the DraftKings app. Uh, 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 I hope that's – I didn't look at the actual weather. No, no it's nothing terrible to worry okay. about. I've, I've got it right now as – it's going to be cold, coolish and humid, but okay. no, no, no significant rain. So let's let's start with I guess what's going to be the chalk. So let me uh, and the chalk is usually what shows up in the projection. So this is this is what I'm getting. So I'm getting Valdez overall on the slate being the top play by a lot. And then and then I'm actually then then I can actually do some different things. Now I presume that from a raw points perspective, Gallon's going to be the the next guy. Um, but mm-hmm. I think I think Valdez is probably the most popular. Um, he rates to be the best play. So then it's, you know, whether you'd want to play Valdez with, with Gallon or Valdez with, with some of the other guys or something that would, that would be, I think the, 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 the chalk build. I mean, what, what, what's your view on pitching? I mean, we can, we can just look at the yeah. whole slate, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I think we could go game by game real quick. Cause I think that it's oh, an interesting okay. way to, on this, on slates like this, I, I kind of like doing that. Cause it does. Get All right, let's, 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 sorry, so let's do it. So Seattle, Seattle, Boston, then let's, let's pull up your screen if you don't mind. Oh yeah. So mm-hmm. Seattle, Boston, I do have um, Rich Hill as one of those um uh as one of those other pitchers that you could that you could play um i don't know anything about kirby um but i'm not getting to him um rich hill i mean listen you know rich hill better than anybody uh 6500 against seattle i mean sign me up i guess yeah so that's that's where i would first look and i have uh boston as you know there's only six teams you could play um and they're one of them i guess um, I don't have them as my as my top my top option though. Uh, I have Seattle actually um, as one of the one of the one of the one of the stacks I might or stacks one of the teams I might concentrate on. Let's put it that way. Right. Um, so I do like Seattle, and yet on the other hand, I do also like Richmond. Yeah, I actually have an interesting take in this game, and uh, again, I want to get creative on these slates, and mm-hmm. I think we should be playing George Kirby. All um, right, who is that? So, you know, he's, he's a young guy. It's not like he's an overwhelming uh, prospect. He does have some talent. I had a really good start his first time out against Tampa Bay. It struck out seven and six innings. Uh, didn't give up any runs. Only given up one run and two starts this year. Uh, did run into a little bit of trouble last time against the Mets. And I'm just going to double check his pitch count. But, but mostly I'm just drawn to this because of the ownership. Uh, all these pitchers have a four and a half or five and a half K prop. Yeah. And Kirby has thrown 81 and 89 pitches. Now it took him a while to get there because – he had a, he, I actually don't really know why. I guess he just must've been working deep in account. Somehow he threw 89 pitches, only giving up three hits and one walk. Um, uh, he only had one strikeout in that last game, but I am going to use a little bit of Kirby just because of the ownership factor and really for no other reason. Um, it, it's, it's, but, but I think it's, I think it's the kind of slate where you want to do that. And it allows you to play some maybe more chalky builds that you, that, you know, you're going to have to eat some chalk on this slate. It's basically impossible not to have, you know, everybody low owned. So I, I do have a little bit interest in Kirby and I am open to the, the, the guys, the, you know, the, the Seattle guys like, like Toro, I expect to be really popular. I think Torrens will be popular as a catching option. I think Julio Rodriguez is going to be popular. I think Ty France will be popular, but I think when you get down to Winker, Souza, uh, JP Crawford, even to some extent, because the lefty lefty situation, you're not going to see people playing these guys as much. And then the one who I don't, I'm sort of surprised to see this low. I mean, those of us who have played baseball for a while, we know what Suarez can do against left-handed pitching and you put him in Boston. It's not great hitting weather because it's 57 degrees, but it is Boston. And I, I like Suarez is the one who stands out the most to me. And a lot of that has to do with just the fact that he, he's going to be low owned. He's four, he's 4.3. It's reasonable. And I like the power at the same time, while I'm going to use some of the, uh, the Kirby, I have no problem with, I mean, I, all the hitters on Boston make plenty of sense. They're just, I, you know, I would imagine going to be a little more popular than I'd like to, to, to play. 
So that's the only the only thing I you know against it. But I, again, if I had to rank my Boston guys, it would be JD Xander, uh, Story, then Devers. Devers actually might maybe the price doesn't matter, so maybe Devers would be a little bit higher. I don't think people are going to play Frenchie Cordero or Jackie Bradley Jr., assuming they're in the lineups as much. And I think oddly enough, people won't play Verdugo. So I would just try to focus on maybe the, the lower ones. But JD is my favorite bat. It's just you have to factor in that he's going to be pretty high owned. Uh, all right, let's talk about Arizona, Chicago. The, we, the, we, this is a weather game, and, and this I will bet you this total rises. So if you want to bet the over of a game, now would be the time to do it. I have it at eight and a half here. I think it's actually then it looks like it might be creeping up to nine elsewhere. So I, I, I've always believed in Gallon's talents, and he's been really, really good this year. Um, and we're seeing, you know, we're seeing the best of him. The Cubs are a weak offense, yada, 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 et cetera. Like, we know this. But you give me 78 degrees in Chicago with 13-mile-an-hour winds blowing out to left, uh, even against Stroman and Gallon, guys who, you know, especially Stroman doesn't give up long balls very often. He keeps the ball on the ground. And Gallon's only given up one home run this year. I think this is a spot I want to attack just because of the weather, if, uh, if nothing else. And I think because of Gallon's ownership and the, and the perception around Gallon, even with the Cubs with a high run total, I don't think they're going to be overwhelmingly popular outside of maybe Contreras, um, maybe Ortega, and maybe Hap. So I do like the Cubs as, as you know, again, not as a stack. I'm probably not going to be stacking tonight, but as, as guys I want to get to. And I like Stroman against Arizona, um, assuming that he's good to go. We, you know, he's, he, was, he was sick, and we'll see what happens with that. But at the same time, if I'm not going to play Stroman against Arizona, you've got the, you know, I, I think Varsho is just a, I mean, he's just been really good. And I also like, uh, the problem is trying to find individual bats is always tough. I guess Marte as a low-owned option uh, would probably be my favorite other guy um, for Arizona. How about you on this one? I think Chicago is probably between that and Seattle is my, are my two favorite non Houston's, you know, um, presuming that Houston is going to be really chalky and try to try to not play them. Um, uh, so I do like Chicago. I, uh, I'll, I'll, I will throw in another Chicago guy. Since we, we don't talk about individual plays too much here. So I have a couple, um, you mentioned already, um, Ortega, you mentioned half, I'll throw in Schwindel as well, mm -hmm. um, into the mix and, you know, if you want to play the Cubs guys, for example, and and you get the win that you want, seeing how cheap they are, you could you could leave money on the table on this slate. Um, in, yes. in, in, in like a lot of it, if you yes. want to think about it. Uh, so that's that is something you could do right off the bat to make yourself a little little different. Like if you want, you could stack the Cubs if you felt like it. You know, and 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 leave millions on the table. And if you get the win that you want, I mean. You only need two other games to fail if you think about it that way, you know. Right. Um, so yeah, I I I, I like the I'm, I like the Cubs. I think the Cubs in this spot, considering that people are going to play Gallon, um, you know, some leverage there, and you know, hopefully you get the wins you want. They're cheap. You know, don't don't keep your expectations too high, but um, you know that uh, I I I like them along with Seattle. I think as my two favorite non Houston's. Yeah. Houston's yeah, just going to be, you know, we're just worried about the ownership, right? Yep. Yep. That's the um, last of, well, that's a big deal. I mean, no, no, of course. But I mean, cause of course they, they, they definitely grayed out the best for me. And as we transition over to that game, yep. um, I, I, I will be taking some bats. The, the one, my favorite ones are no, no shocker, uh, Alvarez, Tucker, Altuve and Bregman. Um, those are my four favorites. I will, uh, I, I will be probably avoiding the the full, you know, anything more than maybe a three man from the cut from the Houston, just because of that. Uh, and then I'm always on the don't ever pick on Valdez side of things. because I just think he's really good and he doesn't tend to get lit up ever, but we're talking about three games here. You don't need to be, no, nobody's that good. You know what I mean? He's only given up one home run this year. If I had to pick the Seattle, the other guys on the uh, Texas side, I, it's always hard. Cause I don't know how their lineup's going to shake out today. Uh, with Calhoun, they sometimes play him against lefties, sometimes they don't. I think Garcia and Seager are really strong plays on the Texas side. And uh, I mentioned my favorite Houston bats. And I also think, now look, if you're, if you're multi-entering, you have another guy with a four and a half K prop who's significantly cheaper than everybody else at 6,100. Yeah. And no one's going to play him because of the matchup. Even if he gets you 12 fantasy points, that might be like the second best score on the slate for a pitcher. Yeah. So if you're not playing, and, and, and maybe, maybe because the win equity is valuable, 
maybe you, maybe if you're going to play some Texas bats, you play them with the auto lineup and you don't play Valdez in that same lineup, basically. Um, maybe you play him with play auto with uh, with uh, the, the other chalky, the, the Zach Gallon. Um, that would be my 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 route of going about this. What are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, I mean, you could play auto if you felt like it. And maybe in those types of builds, you could play auto with 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 like Tucker. <laughs> yeah, maybe. yeah. Oh, 100 percent, especially with the speed yeah. power combo. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something you could do. Uh, Houston, like you were saying, grades out the best. But, you know, you, look, you don't want to play Valdez with 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 Houston. I mean, you just you just can't do anything. I mean, he's, uh, yeah. But in, in la- unless you have Russell, Bobby's really good at this. You want to go 100 percent. Um you know, you can play Siri, you know, maybe he's not going to be as, 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 as low on, but actually 2,300. How are they not playing him? I don't think he's going to be in a lineup. I don't know. why. Oh, well, he, don't, he play would, him. don't play him if he's not in the line. <laughs> he would be possibly, but it would only be because somebody's getting rest because he's sort of, you know, yeah. they've used him against lefties and then they've used him, but even then they, like, like McCormick is sort of taking over that spot. Um, okay. He's got like, their back healthy. If they, maybe if they want to give Brantley a day off, this would be a good day to do it. So maybe then you get Siri in the lineup. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I think that the only one who's going to really be low owned to where it matters is probably maybe McCormick and may and Maldonado. I don't think people are going to play Maldonado outside of five man. So if you're going to do a three man Houston thing, maybe going like Maldonado, Altuve, uh, either one of the lefties or, or Bregman and something like that to just be a little bit different while getting exposure to a Houston offense that we like. Going back to Seattle. I don't know if you mentioned him as well, but uh, I do have a, uh... Julio Rodriguez for Seattle. Yep. As being a play. Um, it's, um, it's a tough, I mean, it's a, t- it's a tough slate. I mean, it's a tough, well, it's a tough slate. I mean, like you, you, you can make plays. It's a, it's a tough slate to be pure. You know what I mean? And, and, and it's, uh, which is fine. Um, I, I think Valdez is kind of a, I think he's kind of a tough fade. You want to know the truth. Um, uh, he's cause he's, he's not, he's, he's not going to get lit up. He's got a floor. Mm-hmm. You know, and and maybe he doesn't doesn't have thirty point upside, but on this slate, when you got maybe a win game in Chicago, and maybe uh, this Boston game doesn't look particularly particularly exciting from the pitchers either. Um, maybe maybe the fifteen to twenty you get out of Del Valdez is just is exactly what you need. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes sense to me. Um, I, I don't know how I, I, I wouldn't be fading him if I didn't try to take some stances yeah. on the other side. I mean, I, I would probably consider Valdez in a, in a, in a regular field uh, at this price, especially at 8,500. Well, 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 hold on. Let's talk about that for a second. So, so, so you were, if, if you were not going to play Valdez, you probably want to play Texas guys. Um, is that because if he's not doing well, that he gives up home runs or just, just. He doesn't just, in general give up that many, but if, but the idea of just going for the full opposite side of, of the way okay. things will go and, Anytime you have a three game slate and you've got everybody, but one player projected to be less than 5% owned. Right. It's just, it's really hard to avoid that just from a game theory standpoint, you could just put random names that I've never seen before. And I would, ha- I would take some. Dude, that's what happened the other day with, with the, uh, you listen, they, they didn't follow through on it, but it seemed like that was going to work out for the Braves rather nicely against Burns. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, they, they eventually you know, they stalled out after that first inning, I guess, but uh but uh, when the, when you look at the projected ownership against who was against the best pitcher on the slate, they're always just just so low owned, you know, yep. that on a small slate, it, you know, you should probably take shots. Yeah, I totally agree with all that. Um, I do have some individual favorite plays that I was going to go through really quick. Some of them popular, some of them not. Um, Suarez, uh, that's a that's a good low owned one. Hap, J.D. Martinez, Walker, Varsho. Um, I want to figure out which other, I guess, Ortega, but again, we're going to end up leaving money on the table. So that's why he actually might be lower owned because people are going to want to spend their money and why Contreras right. might be higher owned. Um, but Contreras also, um, I, I do think the VAR show at 5,100 might sort of surprise some people at the price tag, but like, it's not going to matter today. It just really isn't, um, no matter who you pitch. So uh, the other one would be for Seattle. Like I have like one from each team, basically. It, Toro is by far my favorite bat, but again, he's going to get the ownership. So I like the idea of the, I just mentioned Suarez, but I think you could throw Winker in there if he's in the lineup against the lefty even just to try and get a little different because people don't like to play him against lefties. Um, and then the, uh, the, the, the Texas side of it, it would be Seager and Garcia. Um, 
And those are pretty much my main plays to go with mixing around, mess, messing around with the pitching a little bit tonight. All right, uh, Sheets, anything else before we get out of here? No, so I, I am gonna, gonna scoot on uh, live tonight and you know, just make normal. I maybe a few minutes on the baseball, a few minutes on the basketball, a few minutes on the hockey, you know, take some questions and, and kind of get out of there. So, uh, but we will have updated lineups, um, so that'll help. Um, and you know, with any luck, we'll get we'll get some kind of ownership uh, situation on these guys. And I think that I think the, the the main takeaway from what Bobby's been saying this you know during this this review preview is that you know you almost want to I don't say blindly, but you just you got to just play the low on guys in these in this game. It's not like not like anybody's that great to play. You know what I mean? Right. That, that you need to eat chalk on a slate like this. So so I I would try to go lefty versus lefty. You know, play guys at the bottom of the lineup, you know, and, and just, just hope that you string a couple of, couple of hits together. Yeah, I agree with that entirely. Um, and I have no problem if you do want to make a five man stack, just if you're going to do it, I don't think you can do it with Houston profitably very often, right? right? Not in not in yeah. a largely profitable way. You can maybe no. cash. <laughs> do you think people still even do that on a three game slate? You think there's like a, an inordinate amount of five, get five man stacks, even on three game slates? Yes, but less than there are for other slates. But, sure. Okay, but it's yeah. still, I, I don't know what the percentages are. I could probably do some research and figure it out, but I do think that it's a pretty, um, it's still a pretty reasonably high percentage. And even on this morning slate, like it was, it was definitely going that direction. And that's why I was just, I'm not going to go that way with the, I mean, looking at the White Sox ownership, I was not, I just was not interested in that. That's a reminder, you know, we got to, you know, once, once he finishes this part, we'll, we'll get Goldie on the case for that one. See if he could do an analysis based on the lineup rewinds, a percentage of five man stacks and these, four game slates, five game slates, whatever. Yeah. And, and even for, for field size, you know what I mean? Yep. It's an 888 versus a 15, the $15 or whatever. Yep. Anyway, guys, good luck to everyone tonight. Uh, if I don't see you, the latest I'll see you guys is tomorrow, but I will post different thoughts in the chat. I'll be in discord all night, always available. And uh, yeah, let's have, let's crush it tonight. Good luck, everybody.